Hello and welcome to this back of the net big match preview as Cherries on Saturday travel up to the Black Country to face Wolverhampton Wanderers in what could be a season defining fixture for AFC Bournemouth. Certainly most Bournemouth fans feel it's a must win. My name's Sam Davis. My name's Tom Jordan. Now, before we begin, just got to do a big shout out to AFC Bournemouth supporting stalwart Alan Paul. He's a subscriber and also a monthly supporter of this channel. Last week, he had a bit of a mare to say the least. Had a cycling accident, currently in Paul Hospital after having a fractured hip. Nasty, Alan. Get well soon, mate. And I hope this weekend the cherries bring you a hell of a lot of joy. But yeah, get well soon, buddy. And... There's a few people out there that haven't clicked that red button. What are you doing? It's just getting, it's just getting make, tedious. Make it? sure you're subscribed because by subscribing, Tom, there's loads of content well, they can look forward to. Almost there? too much, I'd say, actually. Tons. Sometimes, yeah, I'm quite tired. Um, yeah, but lo loads of stuff to watch. You've got the free for alls, free for alls, match day vlogs, second look, audio pod, away day review show. So that'll be coming soon for mm. Wolves as well. So if you're a Wolves fan, click the subscribe button because, uh, yeah, you'll have loads of stuff for this game in particular. Make sure you do. Have you done it? Good, here's what's coming up on today's show. So the last time we faced Wolves, Gary O'Neill was caretaker manager. Now, he's permanent. Wolves, of course, they've themselves experienced chain as Bruno Lager, larger, I'll never know that one. He was in charge, but now under the guidance of Julien Lopetegui, we take a look at the opposition and see how they've fared since his arrival. And is this a must-win game for Bournemouth? The games after this weekend include Man City, Arsenal and Liverpool, so surely we need to be looking at three points. We take a look at the stats that suggest that despite our form being inferior to Wolves's, Cherries fans can afford to be optimistic for this one. We also take in some Wolves opinions and thoughts before getting all the team news and injury updates ahead of this mammoth clash at Molyneux. Plus, I'm going to aim to predict both sides. Cherries might have a few more players in contention for the starting eleven, and after Wolves' confidence boosting win at St Mary's last weekend, what team will Lopetegui pick? I'll give it a crack anyway. Yeah, so all that's coming up in the next half an hour. Should we find out what happened the last time we played Wolves at Dean Court? It was so exciting! Yeah, it was a nil-nil, but in the grand scheme of things, that was a good nil-nil. It felt massive at the time. We had just lost 9-0 um, to Liverpool, hadn't we? And obviously Parker had left. So I remember at the time being so buzzed off a, a dull nil-nil. Can't really remember many chances. Nor can I. No, it was really dull, but in that moment, I remember thinking, we've just conceded nine. let Let's We've just got a decent point in a clean sheet. Let's just take it and run. So um, we were happy at the time. I think looking back, we probably think, oh, they weren't really on it then. Mm. Um, but equally, they'll probably be thinking that was the game they could have won. If you're travelling to Molyneux up the weekend, well, say travels. It's going to be 11 degrees, not as cold as previous visits. The last one I went to, absolutely freezing. So there'll be some sunshine and showers, 40% chance of rain. If you go by car, just under three and a half hours. And uh, make sure you subscribe, as Tom said, because our away day review, that's going to be coming up sometime next week. We've got Bright to get through as well. Whereabouts will the away day at Wolverhampton Wanderers rank on our tier list? Wolves fans, you want to make sure you're subscribing for that.
So having lost the last six away Premier League games, AFC Bournemouth will be looking to at least come away with a point at Molyneux. It's not going to be easy though. Because Wolves have won their last two home games and also they're not really conceding many goals, mate. They're looking all right. They are. It was my worry when they appointed uh, Lopetegui, um, an experienced manager, obviously being around the block and a uh, top, top level. So I did think, I think everyone always felt with Wolves that the squad they had, mm. that they would improve. And I think it looks like it's starting to happen. Hopefully they'll have a, they'll have a weekend off. But yeah, as you say, mate, away from home, I mean... I'm pretty sure the last time we scored a goal away from home was firework bonfire night. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Raids. Mm. I mean, that was, I mean, well, 5th of November. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's not good enough, so we need to sort that out. But obviously, I'm sure Wolves will be, be aware as well. We have got a few new additions in, so we're going into it a little bit more positively than maybe we anticipated. Yeah, so, of course, the last time the manager was Bruno, what was it, Lager, Large? What? I want to say Large. I think it's Bruno Large. Bruno Large. I want yeah. to say Lager just because I like that drink quite a lot. Yeah, but in his first season in charge at Wolves, which was previous season, they finished a creditable 10th place, which was not bad at all. Now, they got rid of him. Mm. In October, I think. And then the caretaker, was it Steve Davis? That's right. He took charge for a bit. And I think two days after their final game, they appointed someone. Look at that. Making yeah. really good, quick decisions. Good use of that World Cup break as well, wasn't it? That's, yeah. That's what it's all about. And what it did, it, you know, like it allowed him to get to know his squad, allowed him to prepare. And it's fair to say they've reaped the rewards since then. So after the World Cup then, we're just having a look at the results on screen now. They obviously uh, proceeded to the next round of the Carabao Cup, beating Gillingham. Mm. Also a handy 2-1 away win at Everton, but then is that is that, that good result when Everton is so poor? Lost at home to Manchester United, drew with Villa, drew in the FA Cup with, with Liverpool, yeah. two all, uh, losing the replay. They did lose out in the next round of the Carabao Cup, but look at this, they beat West Ham United, they lost to Manchester City, but they did the reverse, what Man City did to them against Liverpool, 3-0 yeah. against Jurgen Klopp's side, and then arguably one of their, you know, I think it's a great result to beat Southampton with 10 men. Yeah, I mean, 10 men after half an hour as well, yeah. and one nil down. So yeah, it was it was crazy, and obviously ended up getting the uh, Southampton manager the boot as well. Um, but yeah, that was impressive for them to, you know, most teams there would go, God, if we can get a point. Well, I mean, every fan would have probably been saying they were taking a point, so to go on and win it was impressive. And yeah, they they just they look like they've got a little bit more firepower now. I, I always felt that they they look like they could be solid. I think Kilman at the back is quite a good player, and obviously Jose Sarr in goal, but. I think in that Southampton game, it showed that they've maybe got a, got a bit more firepower because they have struggled with goals a little bit ever since the Jimenez injury mm. years ago now. Yeah. So, um, yeah, they're, I certainly don't. I mean, even though it feels a bit six-pointer-ish, I don't think Wolves will get dragged into it, to be honest, mate. I no. think they're going to be too strong. Well, there are some reasons to be optimistic, despite the fact that we are not exactly performing and haven't got a win in what seems like a long time, and Wolves have looked at the last four league games for Wolves do you mm. know who their highest scorer was in their last four games what what player what individual player you mean oh, oh, it's going to be an own goal yeah, yeah. yeah right. look the four the four games their last four against West Ham Liverpool home against Man City Southampton away nine points from them that's strong in them fixtures yeah when you consider that the Sabat the one with the ten men and they've Very created strong. 31 chances and three big chances in those in those last four games, with the majority of their opportunities coming down the right wing. But for but for comparison, Bournemouth mm. have created 34 chances, and four of those are big chances. That's from the Opta stat. So, okay. therefore, I know that they played Man City, I know that they played Liverpool, but we, yeah. oh, you know what? We're creating chances. There are reasons to be optimistic. And maybe, due to their form, they'll come in a bit overconfident, will be under the radar a little bit because our performances have improved despite the Brighton result and mm. despite only drawing our last match. I think that maybe they may, they may take a home win for granted, perhaps. Am I clutching at straws here? Probably a little bit, but I also oh. think that that's probably my main thought process going into all these games because I think a lot of Bournemouth fans, and I think everyone really, is expecting us and Southampton to go. So it's that kind of, right, will te teams take their eye off the ball a little bit? Will they use Bournemouth games to think, oh, I'll rest one or two? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Maybe. I mean, we, we maybe potentially saw that last week against Newcastle. I think everyone had that as an away, away win and, and we were more than uh, worthy of our points. So, yeah, you never know. Might take their eye off the ball a little bit. Uh, which could help us, but equally they'll be looking and going. If we could do back to back Southampton and Bournemouth, that, mm. that's virtually you know sealing our, our safety in a way. So yeah, I, I don't think they will too much, but 
maybe that element of surprise could still be there with us with them new additions that not many people know about. That's that's what I'm holding out hope for anyway. Mm. So talk to me about their January transfer window, mate. Because they signed six players, mm. didn't they? And they spent they, they spent a little bit of money. Yeah, they went. Um, obviously, Lamina come in. Um, who I can't remember who they got him from. A niece, wasn't it? But previously, was Southampton player. And obviously, got sent oh. off in half hour against Southampton, and uh, that looked a bit dodgy. Um, Cunha, um, who they bought in on loan from Atletico Madrid, he's always been highly rated. I don't think it's quite happened for him yet, but he's definitely a good player. Um, I think Sarabia, do you remember when we were at the overlap that Gary Neville said he was trying to sign him when he was at Valencia? Yeah. I remember him mentioning that. And Sarabia's a, a, a good player, a talented player. He's helped them. Weirdly, I, I think one of their best bit of business was Craig Dawson from West Ham. Mm. He's just a rock. And I think him and Kilman is is a defensive partnership that you don't see getting relegated. That's how I look at it anyway. Yeah. Um, Jal Gomez is, is not quite hit the ground running yet, but he, he delivered against Southampton coming off the bench and scoring a winner, I believe. So... He looks like a, a lively one. They got the backup goalkeeper, uh, Bentley. So yeah, they. I think they they done the right thing without going. They go bonkers, but but they added in good areas with with a squad that's already quite capable. I think. Right? What's their What's their ceiling, Wolves? What What should they? If you're a Wolves fan, what are you kind of wanting from every season? Is it just staying in the Premier League, or is it just no. slowly building up? Is it a top ten finish? What? what, what? Yeah, it's, it's difficult. I think minimum expectation has to be to stay in the league or, yeah. or maybe not even getting a scrap, so to speak. But they had that spell in Europe, didn't they, with Nuno? Um, and they were they were always top 10, really, as soon as they come up. And I think now they'll be looking at teams like Brentford, Brighton, mm. and thinking, we, we should be up there. Their squad's just as good as them. So I think, you know, come next season, probably there'll be a, a bunch of them, I think. You know, Leicester, Wolves, Villa, Brentford, Brighton, they'll all be kind of wondering which one could finish top of that pack yeah. kind of just under the, the main six seven teams so yeah it the thing with Wolves is it wouldn't surprise me if say assume they stay up it wouldn't surprise me if they finish 15th or 7th flex season mm, yeah, not yeah, quite yeah. sure there's a few teams in that but it's all about kind of additions and I think now it probably didn't work with Large, and I think now they've got a, got a manager that will take them forward mm, can you remember the last time we played at Wolves uh, was this the one where it was freezing or not? No. No, it was COVID, wasn't it? Yeah. Was it 1 0 we lost? It was 1 0. I think it was him and his header. We needed to win. We really yes, did need to win. And yeah, it was. It was a 60th minute Raul Jimenez goal, and that sealed header. all three points for Wolves. That was then, at the time, our third consecutive defeat. In, in a run of five at the time. So, yeah, we, we, we really needed that. It, it, it's fair to say our lockdown football wasn't overly oh. great. Just just shows how important the crowd is. And the crowd at Molyneux can actually be really loud. Mm. And it's famed for... I tell you what, the cold terraces. It's one of the coldest oh, grounds, isn't it? It's, a, it's the way the wind comes across the crowd, but the, um, the ground, but the crowd certainly do make a hell of a lot of noise. And that's helped by the pre-match atmosphere and the pre-match entertainment that they create. I remember last time, yeah, it was um, pyrotechnics and mm. light shows and all, and all that kind of stuff. So looking forward to that again. Our head-to-head -head record against Wolves, well, away, Bournemouth have won two, drawn zero, lost three. I expect you can remember one or two of the wins, Tom. Oh, I remember going there for promotion season, mate, when we won the league. Um, that was a spat. I always remember, uh, weirdly, when people talk about that when we won the league, I always think the two Wolves games were so pivotal. I don't know if you remember the home one, but we went on a great run. It was a midweek game. Mm. Um, Belica Fobi scored for them. Yeah. Jan Kermigan got two, but it, that seemed, seemed to pick us up. And then the away game, we were 1-0 down. I think they ended up with um, nine men. Mm. But it just looked like it wasn't going to happen. And we scored two late goals and it was just absolute scenes. But I, yeah, so good memories from it in that perspective. But obviously that was when Wolves were kind of mid-table in the championship. So mm -hmm. very different now. But yeah, I, I always look forward to, you know, it feels like it's been a while. So yeah, I'm looking forward to Wolves away, mate. Like you say, it uh, can get a good atmosphere in there. Um, but equally, I, I, I remember some, some good moments. So that's always helpful. So what do they think about us? We scoured YouTube to find out as they preview this big fixture. It just is starting to feel pretty good to be a Wolves fan again. I think... Coming up towards the World Cup break, we're all down in the dumps and now Lopetegui's sort of got the buzz back around the place and things are looking good. Of course, still a long way to go, but Wolves are in a much better position. Now a, a number of points clear of the drop zone and I think I think this Saturday is a 
good opportunity for Wolves to try and extend this impressive run. And now we go on to this game against Bournemouth, who are, are really struggling a little bit at the moment under Gary O'Neill. Patience is uh, quite is wearing quite thin with Gary O'Neill, and we could see if Wolves get a comfortable victory on Saturday, we could see another manager sacked. Um, so five points clear of the relegation zone. Uh, Bournemouth up next, so look on the south coast. This time the south coast comes to us. A score prediction, Harry. It's going to come in. It's been since 2017. 4-1 <laughs> Wolves. Come on. <laughs> I'm going to make a soundboard with you saying that every week. It's over the job. Uh, Bayliss. 3-0. Uh, 3-0. Nil. Three nil. Wow. <clears throat> uh, Jack. It's, it's, it's hard to see us losing, isn't it? But I said that last week. So You got it right about it last week, Jack. You yeah, really did I did get well. it right, yeah. And Sam um, always does. So. But I'm, I'm, I'm going to just 1-1. Uh, I think, oh, yeah. don't do that to us. I, I'll be honest, I, I, I can't see us. I, I, I think we'll win, but I just also just, uh, the balance of results lately, I, I didn't think that we'd beat both Southampton and Bournemouth, so I'm, I'm going to say that we'll, we'll, slip, we'll slip up rather than get two wins. So, is this a must win for Bournemouth? I think a lot of Bournemouth fans are thinking it is, and I'm just going to go through now our fixtures after Wolves, and we alluded to them after. earlier. I have to. I'm just, I'm just looking at it. So, February, obviously Wolves, Manchester City. That's on the 25th. That's a half past fiver. In March, we've got Arsenal. We've got Liverpool. We've got Aston Villa away. So maybe we can look at that as a fixture where we could pick up something. In April, this is where we really have to be winning a sequence of games if it's going to go to form. Fulham at home, Leicester away. Spurs away is not going to be easy. We've got West Ham United at home. That's what I've been happy about. Yeah, Saints away maybe. Might be able to get something. Yeah. Yeah. Leeds at home, potentially. And then in May, we've got Chelsea at home. Always get three points against them. Crystal Palace away. Tricky one. Man United at home. Don't think we'll be getting much out of that. Depending on, you know, they could be in the fight for Champions League. Might just be dropping out of it. They might need that win. We could be down. We could be down. (laughs) And then Everton on the final game of the season. Oh, it always uh, goes well. Everton us. away on the last day. Doesn't yeah. it? That always ends well for us Bournemouth fans. So, a chance for that. It, you know, it, it's fair to say that, look, it, as Neil said on the second look, if we mm. don't pick up three points against Wolves, then there's another three games that we're expected yeah. to lose. And then it then it becomes a thing, doesn't it? That yeah. That we have to then start winning lots of football games. Yeah, listen, I think we would have to do a major surprise in the three after Wolves. Mm. But, and we all said Newcastle was, well, we've lost that, and we didn't. Mm. So, you know, trying to think positively, we didn't lose to Newcastle when everyone thought we would. Um, I think regardless of this game and, and games moving forward, we're going to have to, we're going to have to put out a few shot results, mate. We're just going to have to. Um, it's the position we're in. We're, we're going to have to surprise a few. Um, I think a lot of people from the outside would go, well, Liverpool at home, it's not the worst in the world. They're having a really bad season, but we, it's... In our heads, it's Liverpool, yeah. and it's also we lost nine 0 to them this season when they were very good. So yeah, I, I struggle with that one. But is it? A, I, I never. I don't like to say must win in February because if we lose, and then we go and beat Man City, mm. it wasn't a must win, was it? Because then we're in it again. So, but but I know. But it, but the law of averages say we're, we're going to get beat Man City. I I don't think we can afford to lose, mate. Um, I really don't. But the draw draw won't really help us out, will it? Not particularly. I don't. I think. You draw the Forest, Newcastle, and Wolves. That's three points in three, and then you go in. Then the next three, you go and we'll get nothing. Yeah. It's not not enough. And I, I go back to when everyone said our performance was improved, which perhaps it was marginally. That Forest game, I, I remember a lot of people being upbeat, and I was kind of a bit like, I think that was a real chance. Mm. You know, they scored quite late, and I thought we were comfortable, and I think yeah. that was a real chance, and I thought we might. And we were like wasteful that. as well. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I put it this way: we're in a position where I wouldn't take a draw because I, I, we can't take a draw. We yeah. can't take a draw against against these sort of teams with the fixtures we got coming up. And um, it's our own doing because we messed it up against West Ham, against Southampton, yeah. two goals up against Leeds. You know, we messed all these up ourselves. So we're going to have to get a result, and we've only got the one win on the road, haven't we? Yeah. Uh, Forest away. So, you know, Midlands way, mm. way from... Who knows? Who knows? You but know, know. we got to go... There's no point of going into these games now trying to make us hard to break down. As no, if, no. There's no point. There's no point. We've got to just kind of go from front foot. That's what we did against Newcastle, which was brave. And we got some out of it. So, put it this way. We go and beat Wolves. If you go four points out of Wolves and Newcastle, that's impressive. Yeah. 
and you can start looking at a lot more positives, mate. But um, it will be a tough game. It will be a tough game. Right, so let's get the team news then. You can see it going across the bottom of your screen round about now. But as far as we know, Wolves going to be without Lamina through suspension. Oh. Um, Podence as well. Podence is, is out with a groin injury, but he may be back in contention. Yeah. So we don't, you know, we don't quite know. Whether, and it's one of those things that like they're never specific, are they? Even with the team news, he could be in contention. Also, Hwangi Chan as well, hamstring. Traore as well, that's Bubakar, groin injury as well. Who else? Oh, I knew you were going to do that. Chiquino and Sa- you just want me to... And Sasuke, I call him. Um, he's the relatively new signing that it hadn't quite happened with him. They both got knee injuries. So, yeah, they've got a few out, but I don't think it's... They're not all standout players. I think Pedence, if he comes yeah. back, would be crucial for him. I saw in the week, actually, uh, weirdly, uh, saw that the Wolves under-21s played and, and Neto scored. So he's obviously on, on route back as well, which is a, a shame for us. But I think most of their key players are, are going to be available for him. Could we have two Nettos on the pitch? We could do, potentially, yeah. We could do, mate. Yeah, I'd like to, like to think ours will be anyway. Um, for AFC Bournemouth, uh, the clue. usual suspects, really. <laughs> I ain't got a clue. What's it going on? I don't Lloyd, know who's injured and who's not. Lloyd Kelly yeah. uh, is close. Lloyd, you know, Lewis Cook is, is close. Junior Stanislas is, is on the grass. David Brooks, whatever. Um, also, Zabani as well isn't expected to be there. Um, Marcus Sanessi left the field with a back injury last Saturday. He'll yeah. be all right. And I think him and Stevens. Yeah, they look, were very good. Look, look really good, didn't mm. they? Now, in terms of AFC ball with players to watch, Tavernier? It's not a bad shout. He uh, could, I mean, he could be starting. You know, yeah, right? whether he whether he starts or come, comes off the bench, he, he will be a threat, I would have thought. Um, I did think he looked a little bit rusty, as expected, against mm. Newcastle, but he does offer genuine pace, doesn't he, and power. So, um, and he can fill in so many positions, you're not really sure he's going to come on. Mm. It's quite hard to... He's going to be key for us, I think, now. So... Um, I, he'll be in the squad, I would have thought. So, yeah, if he gets on the pitch, he could be a danger. But, yeah, there's obviously a few new lads they need to watch out for as well. Mm-hmm. Um, we've got our own Traore. Right? There's mm-hmm. one Traore right injured, one that might play, and then we've got Hammer Traore. Right? Yeah. Let's see who the best one is. But they're all quite good at football, actually. All Traore is quite good at football, I think. But our one is is, is lively. I, I like the look of him early doors. Um, so, yeah, I think he might have a goal in him soon, hopefully. Yeah, I would love to think so. Right, the referee is Michael Salisbury. I bet you can remember the last time he took charge of us, can't you? I ain't got a clue, mate. Okay, so home against Leicester, good. Good. That was a comeback win with Bill Foley in attendance, but also Manchester United away. Uh, yeah. yeah, which was what, 3 0? No bad decisions or anything like that. No, no bad decisions no, in that, but uh, yeah, so that's the referee. Yeah. Right then, are you ready to predict some teams? Yeah. Let's do it. Right, here we go. Let's start then with Wolves. We've got the formation up on screen. And mm. Tom, this is this is what you suspect will happen. Yes. Obviously, you're you know best friends with Lopetegui, so yeah, you'll be knowing what's going on. No, um, talk me through what you feel could be the side then, mate. Well, yeah, I think they'll go with that back four with one sitting in front of them, and then they'll be quite expressive going forward. I'm going to go Jose Sar, obviously, in goal. Yeah. Top keeper, top keeper. I do rate him, actually. I think the back four, I'm going to go stick with Semedo at right back. Um, but yeah, I, I would have thought he'll stay in. I'm pretty confident it'll be Dawson and Kilman as the centre half pairing, as I alluded to earlier. Quite solid, but not blistering pace, so mm-hmm. that could be something to look out for. I think they'll go eight Nori at left back. They have got Bueno as well, who plays sometimes, but um, I'm going to go eight Nori. I think um, quite a, quite a talent. I think he might be um, he might be one to watch in the future. Um, in front of them, Ruben Nevers. Yeah, and he's the man really. If you let him dictate the play, you're in trouble. Um, yeah, he's. Top player, I do like him. They, I mean, I know Newcastle were sniffing around, but they managed to keep hold of him, which was key. Uh, this probably, this is quite difficult, but I'm going to go with Matinho and Nunes as, okay. the, as the two in the middle. I think. I was Any really, particular sides? Uh, not particularly. I, I think um, Nunes probably on that right side. Yeah, um, he he looked really impressive at our place. I felt he was probably the best player. New side and he's good. And Matinho, a lot of experience in there. Um, and obviously Lamina being out suspended, I think that'll be the three. Uh, front three, I'm going to put Adama Traore back in on that right hand side. Um, as I said, two wingers could could reverse sides, but I think we'll start with Traore there with his blistering pace. Oh god, he's a handful. Isn't he? Yeah, and we'll go Sarabia on the other side. So there's two really deadly players that will want to want to take people on. So yeah, they're going to be a bit of a nuisance. 
And I'm going to stick with Cunha up top. Yeah. They've obviously got options. Him and Les could come back here. And they've got Diego Costa, remember? Yes, of course. But of with, course. His, with his age and things, I, I do think they'll persist with Cunha. So, yeah, I'm going to go for that. I'm, I'm relatively confident. There's a, obviously a few things that could change in there. But I think with the injuries and the players, they may or may not have him coming back. I'm going to go with that. But it's a, it's a strong sign, mate. I look mm. at it and think, maybe the wide men won't track back that much. Yeah. Maybe we can have them in their centre half with pace. But experienced group and, um, yeah, a bit tricky one. Right, let's go on to AFC Bournemouth side then, mm. and similar formation in a, in yeah. a sort of 4 3 3. Right, let's start with goal. Yeah, we're going to have our Neto in. Yeah. Neto being goal, of course, probably with the armband as well again. Um, back four, right to left, I'll go Smithy. Then I'm going to go Stevens. Yeah. yeah, definitely go Jack Stevens. He played really well in the last game. And then we'll go with Senesi. I think he'll be fine. I yeah. think Senesi will be absolutely fine. So I think he'll play. Jack like, Stevens, PH. Or it is actually, yeah, it is PH. Yeah, you yeah, know I'm what? Sure. Never know. Yeah, I was thinking it in my head then. And uh, left back Jay Z, some more, yeah. will be in there. So yeah, I was well happy with that back four in the last game. So we'll stick with that. Uh, sitting in front, Jefferson Lerma. Who thought? I thought I had a great game. He was back to really his best, good. wasn't he? Yeah, yeah really I agree. Good game. I agree. It was really yeah. good. Um, he's gonna have to have another one of them. And then I'll go with Billing and Hamed Traore in kind of in front of him. I mean, obviously, there's license for Billing to virtually drop back into a, a double pivot with Lerma and Traore will probably get forward a little bit more, but you know, it could work out like that as well. Front three, I'm not 100% sure, because I, I I mean, you kind of mentioned it earlier, I was thinking about Tavernier, but I just think with the length of injury he's had... Might still be a bit rusty. Yeah, and I think... And I there's no reason to take either that's what Anthony I was gonna or say. Wittara out. That's what I was going to say. So I'm going to stick with it now. I'm going to stick with Wittara off the right. Um, Anthony off the left hand side and then obviously Dom Solanke is now back um, through the middle so I'm going to go unchanged uh, there's obviously like I said it wouldn't shock me if Tav came in but apart from that really I don't see why you changed too much it was uh, one of our well it was our best performance since the, since the World Cup mate so yeah that's what I'm going to go with there you go, that's Tom's team. What do you think at home? Let us know in the comments. We would love to hear from you. Tom, have you got a score prediction for this one, mate? Oh, I hate doing it at the moment. Yeah, me too. Because I'm really, really split because normally at the start of the season when it's not going great, you think, yeah, but I know what they could do. And it's been such a long period of time of just not really looking like we're going to win the football matches yeah. that it's, it's really hard to then go, oh, yeah, we'll go all Wolves and win. Really difficult. Um, can we nick a point, maybe? Uh, go on then, that's about as positive as I can be really. Um, I'll go for another 1-1 draw, mate. Um, I think Solanke will get back on the score sheet, so I'll go with that. I'll go 1-1. Do you want to know what, what, what the final score is? Or do you just want to know what it is right now? Oh, you know it, do you? Yeah, Wolves 0, Bournemouth 2. You've lost your head. Yeah. You've lost your head. Because they don't score many goals. Yes, I know they scored three against Liverpool, but... Absolutely lost. That's, it. Put it on the bet slip. That's what it is. Um, look, if you're going up, as I said, safe travels. Make sure you, mm. if you want to appear on our fan cams, we'll be outside the ground and uh, chatting to you, hopefully, and we'll be uploading that straight away. Match day vlog, of course, Sunday morning. Second look on Monday. Away day review, along with Brighton in the week as well. Lots of content. And maybe a new show hitting your eyes and ears next week as well. Who knows? I don't. <laughs> you might not but I'm looking forward to it um, yeah can't wait to see you at Molyneux fingers crossed we get three points until then love the chess love the chess come on